Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. Please pause the video for a second and check the description box to see what today's video is about. Then adjust the three dots menu at the top. I've been reviewing the videos and really, um, if, if you don't adjust the settings at the top, the video looks very grainy. But in honesty, I'm recording this in 1080p, which is the highest possible resolution that you can get. So check the menu at the top as always. Please put it in 720 or 1080p so you have a clear picture to work with or look along the bottom line until you see the cog icon, click quality, and that should adjust it for you. So I'm continuing with the United States series, the America series, and for now, my heart is being led to look at um, prophecies that God has given me concerning the economic situation that will come to the United States. So if you've been following this series, you might notice that we started off in terms of international conflict where I was talking about um, the prophecies that the Lord has given me concerning coming invasion in the future. God has identified the nations that will be coming. Simply check this channel. I'm trying to make playlists so I'm gathering enough videos and then I add them to different playlists. So check the Russia and China playlists and there you should find about 11 or 12 videos that detail clearly what the Lord showed me either in visions, I was not asleep, or in dreams, or in dictations. When God dictates to me, he simply, um, he simply has me get my phone and then he speaks to me and I write down what he says. And then I, I bring that out as he leads, if he says that this is something that should be revealed. So there's the invasion playlist, and then I think we kind of shifted to look at some prophecies of civil war, so internal unrest. God was revealing what the situation will be like on the ground that will eventually catapult America into an eventual breakdown of society within the country where her people are unable to get along. Um, America is a melting pot. There's so many different races, so many different nations, heritage, different types of heritage, different types of ancestry, um, because so many people have moved here over the generations to pursue what is known as the American dream. But now God is revealing, or God has revealed to me over a, a long period of, period of years that that cohesion will break down. America will no longer be a nation that is able to get along. People will be split along so many different lines, religious lines, um, partisan lines, political lines, skin color lines, and this turmoil will eventually topple the nation into a situation where um, citizens even citizens who have traditionally been here all along will pick up weapons and go to war against each other. Now the Holy Spirit has been leading me for the last few videos in a different direction, which is economically. And so the prophecy for today I received on the 22nd of May, 2020, and it's called the empty basket. And what this prophecy is generally looking at is, hmm, is economic downturn. Um, one thing that I've noticed in these prophecies is God is almost like an expert cameraman. So sometimes he will zoom out and then reveal to me something like an overall picture, such as this nation will be destroyed. And then that is the prophecy that I bring. The nation will be destroyed. And then sometimes the lens will zoom in on one particular aspect of the destruction. So I remember there was a prophecy where I, I shared that God gave me a dream where I was sitting in a circle of women. I was in the very outermost circle and the who's who's, the women of power and the women connected to power were sitting in the center. And what these women were planning was nothing short of the destruction of the nation. They were planning for the nation to burn. They were planning for the nation to be torn down. They were planning to stage events, situations, processes, and policies that would eventually tear America down from her high place. And these were American women. 
and they were planning sedition, right? So that video is, is on the blog somewhere. I, I cannot remember which one. But one thing you can do is if you check the description boxes, you can easily move through the video library and find out what each one is about. So you might be able to find this one that I'm talking about. So God will zoom in and show this fall will not be accidental. Then he might zoom elsewhere and, and show even though the fall is not accidental, it's going to be greatly exacerbated. It's going to be made a lot worse because while America's enemies are hammering her from within, America has enemies shooting arrows at her from outside the borders. So what the lens of God has zoomed in on now is we talked about money crash in the previous video. This one is looking at the rise of hunger in the United States. This is a word that I've brought several times. The Lord says that um, a cry will rise from the throats of Americans as their buying power is destroyed. So as the money in the nation falls and as different other economic disasters roll out one after another, some of those will be very bad policies that the government will implement. So there's this common saying that goes, whom the gods seek to destroy, they first make mad. And basically that's just your little Roman Greco saying that says that when it's time for empire to fall, one of the first things that you will notice is that the leaders of the nation begin to make extremely bad and extremely terrible choices. And even God says this throughout the book of Isaiah. He says that one of the markers of a nation being cursed is that the leaders of the nation seem to suddenly lose their minds. Um, they'll be confronted with three choices, best choice, not so bad choice, and then worst possible thing that you could do. And the citizens are watching them going, it's A, it's clearly A, pick A. And they all unanimously go, I think C would be the best thing to do in the situation. And so they will make bad choices because the Lord will leave them. The wisdom of God will leave them. The wisdom that rests upon a man to ably rule his life and by extension, the wisdom that rests upon the leaders of a nation to rightly rule the kingdom will depart and they will begin to, to make insane choices. They will begin to do the worst possible thing in, in any given situation. And as a result, these things will cause the navel to stumble and then ultimately to topple and fall. So today, the Lord zoomed the lens in on what I think is welfare. So I had this dream and I called it a natural dimension dream. Um, meaning that God is showing me something that we can all easily understand and relate to. It's something that's taking place here on earth. You know, the fall of governments is something that's taking place here on earth. If you visit the blog regularly by now, you should be able to know that sometimes I see things um, that have nothing to do with what's going on here on earth. Things that are taking place in the spiritual realm far out of our sight but the only thing that we notice is the repercussions that those spiritual things will have here on the earth on our lives as humans. But this was um, a natural dimension dream. It's called the empty basket. So I dreamed simply that America became super poor. I'm talking poor, poor. I'm talking real poor. The kind of poverty that America constantly makes documentaries about of other people's countries. People were struggling to put food on the table and all the luxuries and the delicacies that Americans are used to. Now, this could be anything from an Xbox, fancy sneakers, to simple luxuries that other nations, for instance, in Europe, when they were going through their struggles way back in the day, are very familiar with. Simply being able to get something like milk or cheese, those things have been considered luxuries in other countries as they as they have gone through um, severe economic hardship. 
And that is the kind of poverty that came to America. Luxuries and delicacies, wine, cheese, fancy things, absolutely disappeared from real life. In fact, throughout the dream, something kept appearing written in the air. Sometimes when God wants to emphasize something in a dream, I see writing in the air and it kind of appears, you know, around my head or it sometimes appears in front of me like a stamp on the dream. And the words that I saw in this dream or the word that I saw were the letters W-I-C, W-I-C. And so it just kept stamping on the dream, wick, wick, as I saw the images passing by behind those letters. And WIC stands for Women, Infants, and Children. It's a low-income feeding program that's here um, in the United States for families that are below the poverty line, okay? So it's government assistance that is given to female-headed households. So there's no male in the household. It's a woman and her children. And this woman is receiving government assistance by which she can buy food, pay for health care, and cover a few basic bills. I'm talking about keeping the lights on, keeping the heat on, and maybe putting something, a portion towards the rent, whether or not she's working. So WIC is the thin blue line between a woman starving with her kids in the house or a woman being able to buy the cheapest cereal on the shelf as a minimum nutrition for her children. So the United States entered a, a serious economic slump. And I saw in the dream that people were very hungry. People were very hungry. And because they were hungry, people were very angry. People were extremely angry in this dream. And I saw that unlike in other places, in other nations where as people begin to, to hunger, as people begin to suffer, they soften. People soften brothers and sisters, during times of suffering. And sometimes this is why God allows suffering to be a mode of turning the hearts of a person or turning the hearts of a people back to him. Um, as a Christian, I hear all the time that people are choosing to be atheists. Always bear in mind, whatever your choice is theologically, do not think that you have inherited this out of the great beyond. Do not think that this is being forced on you by society. You must understand as you watch this video that whatever choices you are making theologically, you are making these choices. That is why God is not going to call your mother, your father, your best friend, your pastor, or any other person to stand next to you and give an explanation for the life that you have made. You are choosing to be an atheist. You are choosing to be an agnostic. You are choosing to be a believer in, um, there's this phrase, the great flying spaghetti monster. Whatever it is that you are deciding, you are making that choice and you will stand alone before the Lord. So God allows suffering as part of the human condition. God is not the author of suffering. Suffering is the end result of sin being part of the world. We live in a fallen world because of the choices that our forefather and our foremother, Adam and Eve, made. And because of that, sin entered the world and with sin, all the ugly tentacles that sin brings. When you see an addict on the street in a terrible and dilapidated state, when you see a person who has lost their life because they're on their fifth abortion or whatever the case may be, those are the tentacles of sin that follow the initial choice to sin. And so God allows suffering to be a part of the human storyline. And the reason is that mostly when people suffer, they soften. A person can be very hard and very proud, but if that person loses his business, loses his license to practice medicine or law or accountancy or whatever it is, loses his place in school, if he's been running around and sleeping with girls and vaping and not paying attention to his education, when he loses his place in school, there comes this shock to the system. There comes this, oh, it's possible for me to lose this privilege. Oh. This situation was not forever 
it's possible for something to be taken away from me. And then people soften. And when people soften, they usually go through feeling sorry for themselves and they experience remorse. But then after that, most people, if they fall down low enough, pride is removed. And brothers and sisters, pride is a very evil shield that separates us from God. The Bible says, God resists the proud. So when you fall low enough, the general response of most people is to soften. And this is when you see in the Bible, people begin to cry to God. Even the people in Nineveh who were not traditionally Christians, when Jonah came to them and told them, he's going to burn it down. They experienced a shock and then they fell into remorse. And the Bible says that they clothe themselves with sackcloth, which is the traditional clothing for when you're really grieving and you're really sorry. And they, as one man, cried out to the Lord. They even put sackcloth on the cows and the donkey to show that even their animals were sorry for their sin. And this is why God did not destroy that city. But here, as an evidence of the deep-rooted pride that was in the nation of America, the United States went the other way when she began to suffer. She didn't soften and she didn't repent and cry to God. People got depressed, yes, they became very despondent, but they also became very anti-God. So there was very strong anti-God sentiment and they didn't want to hear what any Christian had to say. They didn't want to hear about salvation. They didn't want to hear about Jesus. They didn't want to hear about turn to God for help. Um, they, they, they were full of anger. And I saw myself trying to reach out to so many people at this time in the nation, but nobody wanted to hear about it. In fact, a lot of people blamed God and a lot of people had resentment towards God. And I saw people pushing me away. They shoved my hands away and they walked away um, from what I was trying to say to them. But overhead and stamped on the dream, the letters W-I-C, women, infants, and children, which is an indication that a nation is slipping into a situation where more and more women are the heads of households, more and more women are in charge of the homes because there are no men in the homes. These letters began to get thicker and blacker and bigger as people rejected those who were trying to offer them Christ as a lifeline in the crisis. And so I saw that poverty really dug in to the nation, really dug in to the bellies of people. And the whole nation of America was dragged down to the lowest point that it had ever been in history. And so I shared here that I think that God was showing me the government assistance program as a way of what the Bible always shows. I've shared in a video before that when the Bible shows that it's women and children left in a city, that city is basically destroyed. When a city is devoid of able men, whether it's able men who can run to the forefront and defend her, or whether it's able men who can stay in the home and be father figures, brother figures, uncle figures, and grandfather figures, and take care of the weaker member of members of society in the home. When you see a home like that, it means that a nation has come down to its most vulnerable point. And so the number traditionally in economics, the number of women and children who are not self-sufficient in a society is a very accurate measurement of the dependency level of that country. And I saw in the dream that even the middle class, families who never ever thought that they would have to fill out a form and get government assistance, something that we're seeing now during the coronavirus, the, the amount of people who have gone on unemployment is unprecedented in this nation's history, except for the time of, I think, the Great Depression, which was really, really long ago. But middle-class um, mothers and middle-class families who had never had to apply for food, never had to apply for housing assistance, never had to apply for health or financial assistance, assistance I saw that they had to go on this WIC program and that was the dream. So um, as always, I say that we deal with, I deal with, who's we, Celestial? I deal with um, 
sober sobering things on this channel and always we have to take these matters to God in prayer I know that some people will not believe me but uh, to be quite honest that doesn't move me God gave me a work to do and I'm genuinely trying to do it to the best of my knowledge so we have to take these matters to God in prayer and we have to order our lives in such a way that we will be accounted worthy to escape these things I know that I have shared transparently on the blog that God will take care of his people. This is an assurance he gives to me. And since I know that I am a Bible-believing Christian, just like so many of you who are watching this video, or so many of you who may want to give your lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, God's promise is that he takes care of his own. So that promise is only good if you're one of his own. And I've also said on the blog repeatedly that you cannot fool God you cannot be living in carnality. You cannot be a Christian who's rubbing up to the world during the week and then finding your way to an online Bible study or, or a brick and mortar church on the weekend. The Bible says, um, do not be deceived. God is not mocked that everyone, everyone will receive according to his deeds, according to what he has done. And the Bible also teaches that the heart is an open highway to God. There's nothing you can hide from God. You can't even hide the thoughts of your mind from him. So he knows if you're one of his or not. And one of the things that should give us comfort as we go further and further into these times is that Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. Hearing the Lord's voice is not only what so many spend their time doing, which is, oh God, give me a prophetic dream. Oh God, show me a vision. Let an angel come and visit me. Brothers and sisters, we are in the times now, honestly speaking, let's just be real on this broadcast for a second. What we need more than anything else, more than gold and more than silver, even though I'm not going to knock it, gold and silver is very helpful when you've got things going on. Um, in the economy or in the nations at large, you may not be an American watching this, but still you may be going through economic hardship and the shaking of your country as we watch this virus just blast through all the protocols and all the governmental policies that we have had in place for years. They are failing. They are proving not to be effective for whatever reason. I'm not saying that they actually not effective. They might be being prevented from being effective, if effective. But for whatever reason, you might be finding that life is extremely precarious. What you need more than money, what you need more than prepping, you need godly wisdom. So when Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow, what you need above all things is to hear the voice of the Spirit of God in these times. God is such a strategist. God has all my respect. I tell you, there is no being on this planet or in the worlds at large that is wiser than God. I have been struggling to solve some things in my life at times and the Lord will just speak a scripture to me and it's like the transformers. Everything just opens up and I'm thinking, why didn't I see this? Why didn't I think of doing it like that? The Lord Jesus Christ solves Rubik cubes in nanoseconds. That is the depth of his wisdom. And I'm telling you, if you receive that wisdom for your life, then no matter what is coming, God will give us celestial understanding. Not me celestial, his, which means divine understanding, wisdom, and knowledge of how to stock and how to store and how to run and hide or stand and fight depending on the moment, depending on the need and the situation. So this is the dream, the empty basket. I'm Celestial and this is the master's voice. Thanks for being with me. I will be back with another video when I can. I want to say thank you to those who are supporting my ministry and as a small caveat here, if you're moved to send a gift or a donation to this ministry, please would you consider sending it to PayPal and not Cash App because Cash App can sometimes be problematic. Thank you so much. God bless you. God keep each and every one of you. Please do not be moved by the storms that we are currently seeing blowing in the, in the United States right now. 
remember that I shared a word on the blog. It's in, I think, one or both prophecies um, called Redacted Information Revealed. And God said that as the United States begins to go through her changes, the television will become the star of the home. He said it more than once. He said that the TV will become the star of the home because on our television sets, we are going to start to see things that no eye has seen, that no ear has heard, and that has never entered into the minds of man. The TV is going to start revealing things, redacted information revealed, hidden things, but also events and sequences and things happening that we never thought we would see in our time. And one of the things he said to me personally is that these things will have incredible power to distract and that we should not let our hearts be carried away to them. And so while I'm not at all saying that we should live ignorant of what's going on, I am saying, as Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled, keep your eyes on God, be of good cheer. Our champion and our king has overcome the world, including America. God bless you. This is Celestial. Thank you for being with this channel. Please share the videos. Please subscribe to the channel. Please visit the blog. Um, it's all to our mutual benefits. Because as God is sharing these words, we're listening, we're learning, we're growing, and we're preparing because of his wise counsel and the guidance of his Holy Spirit. All glory on this channel, on the blog, belongs to Christ alone. Thank you. Bye.